Anyway, we talked a lot about just one thing and we haven't even looked at the data yet. Let's take a look at the data. We'll start with the basics. Like the one I always start with is the project because the project is like a symptom, you know, a symptom of do they care? Have they done the, the very basics, which is to get their project data right? And instantly, you, I mean, you can just see here, the, the top yeah. three things you see is the project, the site, the building. The project has a, a code there. I'm not sure. Is, is that, does that code mean anything to you? Is, is no. it like an accounting code? No, no, okay. I have no idea what that is. Right. So so most projects, you know, they have the, the full name, which they have, uh, most projects have two names. And this goes for, we'll talk about naming quite a bit, because this is a bit, there's a lot of confusion about. But the AC industry loves to have two names for everything. Mm -hmm. They have the long name. The long name is what you put down on contracts. It's like the full name. You spell it out to your colleague or, or to anyone who wants to really know what it is. And then you have the short code name. And this short code name is the, the one you put in your files. Like if you have a XYZ project, you know, you, you name it XYZ dash A for architect dash, you know, whatever numbers you use for your project. That kind mm -hmm. of X, Y, Z you, you have is that, that short code name. You have it in your transmittal system, in your email prefixes. That's your code name. And same with the building, right? The building might have a short code name. If you have many buildings on a site, this is building A, B, C, building one, two, three. The full name might be something longer and descriptive. It depends totally on your project, of course. Mm -hmm. It might be even a marketing term. Who knows? But you have a short code name, which you which you code it on, let's say you had a big site plan with 12 apartments, like you'd, those, the thing you label it, that short code you use. Same with rooms, with rooms, there are always two names for a room. You have a short code name, like room 1001, that's the code name. Then you have the long name, like communications room, or, mm -hmm. you know, mail bathroom, or storeroom. You know, that's the long descriptive name. So there's always two names, always comes in pairs. And that's what we're looking at here, is the code name. So the code name for the project is, 21121, which according to you has no meaning. So that's that's a red flag. The code name for the site is default. That's definitely a red flag. The code name for the building is nothing. That's that's an even bigger red flag, right? If I was a facility manager and I want to press a button on the lift and see what's uh -huh. what's in the model, that should be the code name, like G123 and so on. Okay. The long name would be things like ground floor, mezzanine, lower ground one. So something like that, you know, a uh, podium, a rooftop, that type of, that's the long name. And you can even see here, there's an inconsistent, like plan negative one, maybe. Yeah, and, uh, and that, then they uh, change, floor. Yeah. they change the naming scheme, you know, they don't capitalize it. And then, then here doesn't have a number. Uh, and maybe, and I don't know what tuck plan means. Maybe it means roof. That's so a roofing. That's okay. roofing. It's roofing, yes. Perfect. So just a little bit of consistency. I agree. I spotted that as well. It looks weird. And so that's the code name. Now we look at the long name. So if you scroll over here, the long name is Ulural Hage. That's all right, actually. That is all right. Absolutely all right. And then we'll take a look at the long name for the site, which is over here. It, this one doesn't even have a long name. But how do you define a site? Who is responsible to give a name to the site? It depends on the type of project. If you have a large real estate owner who has multiple sites or many subsites within a bigger site, for example, you have a campus or a defense precinct or whatever, a health precinct or mm -hmm. a defense base or whatever, then depending on how that's laid out, they may have multiple site names. If it's not the case a, here. This is just a singular project. If it's not the case uh, there, project. then the question is always is, is how do you refer to it in the rest of your documentation? Because that's all the database is. It's a record mm -hmm. of what you have already communicated in other documents. So if you communicate that site as, I don't know, the street address, 123 Foo Street, then mm -hmm. put there 123 Foo Street, end of story. And there's and if you never have a short code for it, then just put 123 Foo Street because that's the only thing it's ever known by. Can you use also the project name? Because, for example, when we are talking here between the colleagues, uh, where are you going? Which project, are which site are you going to? We say the project, the project's name. Correct. And if that's, and if that's what you put in all of your exchanges, in the contracts when you sign it, if that's mm -hmm. what you call, if that's what you call the project when you sign it in the in the contract, mm -hmm. or and if that's what's in your file names when you send it, right? Every file name generally has the project code in it, mm -hmm. almost always, right? That's mm -hmm. a convention that our industry has established. That should be your project code name. If you say where are you going on this site, and you, you the name you say, that's mm -hmm. what it should be. Okay. If that's what you've written down, like generally you'd also have the site name in the contract somewhere, and mm -hmm. maybe it's just a short address, and so be it. 
but site site it will be less important if it's a if it's these smaller simpler sites it has more importance in these larger more complex projects yeah. if you're only dealing with one building it's of less importance if you have a big real estate portfolio especially that's more important mm -hmm. um for regarding building i see a mistake here because we see two different buildings and we have only one structure for oh, project well, structure for one building right Okay, yeah, I, I don't know. Is Are these two separate buildings? Yes, they are separate, actually. They are in the same place, like in the same project, but they are separate. The foundation is case. common, so now I don't know how you exactly, but they are like separate. You see there is a space between the walls in the middle, if you look. You have the one in the right and yeah. the other one uh, to the left, you see? That, that is the split right there. Yeah, so we should definitely be having uh, two buildings here then, if that's the case. We even call yeah, them building different a, names. B. The one to the there right, we call them building B, and the one to the left, building A. So yeah. yeah. There you go. I should see building A, building B in here. And same with the stories. I should have you know different levels of building mm -hmm. A, different levels of building B, and so on. Yeah. And if we take a look at an example story, oh, sorry, if we, we, we missed that, actually. Uh, the building has, see, this is another thing which is really messed up. There is a, this isn't an IC specific thing. For data management in general, in any database, there is a difference between having no data at all, which we call null, there's nothing there, mm -hmm. and having data that is empty or invisible, like a, just empty text, mm -hmm. like a zero text with, with, no, with no characters in it. So in this case, this is text with no characters in it this name and long name, which is as opposed to not even filling it out. And that's a, a big problem of data quality because people don't know whether you just haven't gotten around to filling the data yet or whether you've, you've filled it out and it's actually meant to be nothing, which kind of just doesn't make sense anyway. We have to start paying a bit more attention and say, please fill this out with useful information. Yeah. So taking a look at the story here, we have the long name and the name being exactly the same. And yeah, so, and maybe that's the case. I mean, it's good to look at what they have in their documentation. The long name should be exact, like what you put in your elevation, your sections, that's what you should be seeing. Mm -hmm. It's no different. There's nothing magic about it. Yeah. And maybe they have labeled it plan negative one in their, in their elevations. I don't know. I don't know this project. So yeah, I guess one of the first things I look at is their, after all the, you know, the, the schema and all that and the geolocation is basic names. Have they got their project structure correct? And I start from the project and I move down into the details.